last time we have talked about how God uses His nature and His grace to motivate us to trust in Him, to serve Him, to love Him, to obey Him. So God wants us to be motivated mainly by the grace of God instead of mainly by the law. Now we, the law does serve to remind us and to warn us if we sin or not to obey God. Does, the law does tell us what to do and remind us and warn us. But it should not be the main motivation. If I use an illustration, like, uh, um, you know, a Christian should be serving God and say, God loves me very much and God has a great, wonderful plan for me. And when I love God, He will prepare for me things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and a human mind cannot think of. So I'm happy to serve God. And when I uh, love Him, He will he will uh, reward me and bless me with blessings I've never thought of. So that would be that would give us motivation to uh, follow Him and obey Him and love Him. So I hope that we all will be mainly motivating Christians to love God and serve God with the with God's grace. Instead of saying you have to do this, you have to do that. Now we do. Tell people, yes, we have to do it, but we have to do it not out of, uh, not under pressure, but because we gladly do it. Because God is a wonderful God. He is very happy when I serve Him. He is very happy when I love Him and glorify Him. He is very happy. So I'm happy to, to glorify God and to share with people what God has done in our lives. So that should be the motivation. Then people would be joyful. And, and we have looked at some Bible passages and they, you know, uh, we noticed that in many Bible passages it does tell us, give us uh, the motivation to, um, to serve God, to uh, give us grace to motivate us, to tell us the grace of God to motivate us. Okay? Now, here is a simple outline because now uh, some of you have submitted assignments, but I noticed that Many of you don't have a clear outline and you did not tell me your outline. So I hope you will, in your future uh, assignments, that you write outlines. You write down and it will help us. When we have the outline, then we will not be just going uh, stray away in different directions, but we'll follow a straight path when we uh, give a message. Okay? Now here are four points that we can use for uh, writing a, a message. The first point, for instance here, uh, a simple outline of how to have wisdom. How to have wisdom from God. Okay? So first point would be the negative and positive examples of people. Many people don't have wisdom to relate to people and to do tasks. And some have great wisdom. So, uh, now what is the point of uh, telling people about the, the negative examples of people because then it, they will know that you know without this quality this nature of God then they have problem so if they don't have the wisdom of God when they don't have the wisdom of God some, some Christians or even pastors they yell at the wife and they think that well that shows my authority but what happened is it breaks the relationship. The relationship would not be good. And then what happened is they will suffer in a marriage. They don't get the support from the wife. They will be, they will have problem in, you know, uh, having joy and serving God with wisdom. So now some people think that, you know, when I yell at people at my wife or even at church members, some people yell at the church member, they think that it will show the authority, but actually it is a lack of wisdom. Or some people, they think that uh, when they disagree with someone, they have to argue, they have to shout and yell, and that is also lack of wisdom. But when we have wisdom, we'll listen to people, we'll respond to them, we'll guide them, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have communication with them and show that we really care about them. That is wisdom. So even, you know, uh, 
so Christians even they have been saved for a long time they might not understand that wisdom is important okay so, and then good, good examples positive examples of people who have wisdom for instance you know some people they know how to handle people how to relate to people talk to people and care for people and then they can really influence other people and they build up other people's spiritual life and then two God's nature and grace God is full of wisdom. He is a wise God. He is very wise when He creates our body, our brain, our, uh, every part of our body, and create all the living things in the universe. He is full of wisdom. And He is full of wisdom to change people's lives, to save them, to, uh, and to how to uh, raise them up to be great Christians, to be Christians who glorify God. So this is all his wisdom and he has a wisdom in the world the plan of the world that he want to carry out his work and uh, in the whole world he will carry out his his uh, plan and it will achieve great things for us and he also is happy to give us wisdom so God doesn't just keep his wisdom he gives us his wisdom and why many people don't have wisdom in many areas of their lives so it's important for people to know why they don't have the wisdom. They don't have the wisdom because they, they have been misled by the world. They think that yelling at people will show the authority. But this is folly. This is foolishness. Or some people think that you know, yelling at the wife, yelling at the husband, is wisdom that is also foolishness. So some people may have been misled. And also some people just don't care about the things of God. And they think that this is wise because they think I have salvation and then I also have the pleasure of the world. But actually it is foolishness and that's why they don't have the wisdom of God. And then very important how we can have wisdom from God. So how can we have wisdom of God? First we put down our foolishness. If we have foolish ideas, false ideas from the world, we want to put those down. We want to learn from the Bible to learn the wisdom. Actually, the biblical way is always the wise way. The biblical way to care about people, to love people, to bless people, to help people. This is all wisdom and how to uh, listen to people, how to have love for people and how to communicate with wisdom and plan with wisdom and, and wait for the Lord to guide us and obey the guidance of God. All these are ways of having wisdom. Uh, and also we can learn from wise Christians how they can have wisdom. I, when I came out from the seminary, I noticed that actually I haven't learned many things how to be a wise Christian. But after I was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and then the Holy Spirit taught me how to really appreciate God's love and how to treasure my life and to understand that all sins have destruction. You know, I haven't heard this message for many years. Uh, I have heard many messages, but I haven't heard people preach about this. Now, the message I've heard is like this. When we have sinned, we repent and ask God to forgive us, then we'll be forgiven. But I haven't heard the message of saying that sins are destructive. Even when people have the forgiveness of sins, when they yell at people, they ask people to forgive them, they, are, may, they may be forgiven, but they would, you know, they would have uh, destroyed the relationship to a certain extent. If they yell at the wife all the time, they would destroy the relationship, even if they have the forgiveness. When people steal money, even if they repent and they pay the money back, still they lose the trust of people. So, so uh, people didn't realize that sinning will have destruction, even when there is forgiveness. There will be, it uh, is destructive. So we need to not only repent of our sins, but we want to say no to all sins. We want to reject all sins. That is wisdom. So I thank God to teach me this wisdom. Okay, now, so now we change this to have another topic, the outline. Now in this outline, the most important part are number two and number four. Number two is God's nature and grace. We always want to glorify God, to let people know how good God is. 
and how He is gracious to us, how He loves us and cares about us, and then how we can have this quality of God. Now, the other parts are also important, the negative and positive examples of people would motivate people to see you know, the shortcoming if they don't follow God, and also uh, the good things when they follow God, and then why many people are hindered from having the blessings of God. Okay, now, if we have another topic, for instance, how to have the joy of the Lord. The negative examples would be people, you know, there are some Christians Um, okay, someone says you cannot hear me, but then other people say they can hear me. So uh, please check your sound system. So can other people hear me? Okay. Okay, now, um, joy of the Lord. Why uh, the condition that many Christians don't have the joy? Uh, that they... They're under pressure. They say, I have to obey God, but I cannot obey God. I have, you know, I'm weak. I'm unhappy. Or they carry the burdens. They say, oh, I want to grow, but I, I cannot do it. I want to serve God, but I cannot do it well. So they put pressure on themselves. And a positive example is that some Christians, they really enjoy God and they they, uh, they say, God is so full of blessings, I want to love God, I want to serve God, I want to obey God. And then they enjoy God. They enjoy God first by praying to God and loving God. Lord, you're so gracious, you're so good, you're always good to me. I can enjoy you, I can enjoy my life, I can enjoy serving you. Then they have more joy. So it's good to see people who have the joy of the Lord. They, they are good examples to other people. And God's nature and grace. God is a joyful God. Heaven is full of joy. Jesus said, when one sinner repents, the whole heaven will rejoice. So God is happy when any one sinner repents. And God is very happy and the joy will go to all the saints, all the angels in heaven and they all rejoice so God is a joyful God and also when people are filled with the Holy Spirit they will experience the joy of the Lord it shows that God is full of joy he's a, and he's happy to give us joy he wants us to live in his joy he he when we the more we come to him the more we'll have his joy and why many people don't have joy because they carry the burdens because they only look at the negative things of people, look at the negative things of ministry, the problems of ministry, instead of looking at what they have done, uh, whatever it is that they have done for God sincerely, God is very happy. So people look at the negative things, they look, they remember, they think about the negative things all the time, and that is why they don't have joy. So how can we have joy? First, we want to put down the burdens. We say, someone else's problem, I will try to bless the person, but I don't want to carry his burden. If one of our family member or a friend or a church member, they always like to yell at people, I don't have to be angry. That is his problem. If I have anything wrong, I've done anything wrong, I ask him to forgive me and I try to change. And if I've done nothing wrong, I don't have to be angry. I will try to guide the person to say that, well, God is good to you and God is good to me. We can enjoy God together. If there is any problem, we'll try to fix it instead of uh, feeling angry. So we don't want to take people's burdens. And we, in our ministry, we realize that it's God's ministry. God is responsible for His ministry. He wants us to do well and He will give us strength. Because Jesus said, uh, that you know said to Peter cast the net to the right hand side and then in immediately he caught uh, many fish so Jesus said also he who dwells in me I'll dwell in him also and then uh, you'll bear much fruit so we'll bear much fruit and we'll be joyful so Jesus is responsible for ministry I don't have to carry any burden. I can count His blessings. I can rejoice in Him. And God is happy when I rejoice in Him. So these are ways that we can have joy, the joy of the Lord. So this way we help people to have the direction of having joy. The problem when people don't have joy and uh, good things, 
the positive thing when they have joy and God is a God of joy and he wants to give us joy and why we don't have joy and then how we can have joy okay now let's move to another point how to enter God's perfect plan in Romans 12 1 to 2 it talks about dedicate our body as a living sacrifice uh, and then uh, do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewal of our mind then we'll discern the good and perfect and uh, pleasing will of God so we want to discern God's pleasing will his perfect will and and then when we discern it we want to enter God's perfect will so negative examples and positive examples of people there are people who believe in Jesus who goes to church and they read the Bible and they pray but they don't seek God's perfect uh, will they just follow God's way according to their pleasure when they want to they, they follow God's will when they don't want to they just get angry they just get lazy and they don't realize it is beneficial for them to follow God's will so they just they lose opportunities some people have great gifts if they use the gifts for God they can enter God's perfect will or some people they don't have a good relationship with their spouse they don't have good relationship with people and then they they, uh, they ruin their life and then they cannot en uh, uh, enter God's perfect will and then positive examples of people who follow God's perfect will now there are some people that they really follow God for instance Catherine Kuhlman now she has sinned when she married a, a, a divorced man the man uh, the minister divorced his wife in order to marry Catherine Kuhlman and Catherine Kuhlman uh, was very regretful of that, of that and then finally she left him and after that she really dedicated her life to God and and then God used her greatly in her healing and in her ministry to bring many people to revival and she had a very close relationship with God she said to people please please don't offend my Holy Spirit as if this is his, her Holy Spirit that she has such a close relationship with God she said don't hurt my Holy Spirit don't uh, make him feel sad so she has a very close relationship with God and God uses her greatly and and uh, there is a man called uh, Rhombus Liadon. He wrote the book called God's Generals. And you can watch those videos online. You look for God's General, uh, and then you can see uh, uh, Robert Liadon. And also you can see Robert Liadon and Catherine Kuhlman. And uh, Robert Liadon said one time he was in Catherine Kuhlman's meeting when he was a young kid and she saw a nun enter the place uh, on wheelchair and her her hands were crooked like this they cannot be straight and she could not walk and the other other nuns would push her into the meeting and then in the meeting Catherine Kuhlman would lead the people to praise God and love God and worship God and then after a while she started to say you know that she received the word from God someone is healed in a certain place of certain sickness and then people start to experience healing and then uh, Robert Leardon saw this nun her fingers start to pop up and straighten up one by one becoming straight and and then the whole hand stretch out and then she started to stand up and the other nuns helped her to stand up and then she started to walk so Robert Liadon saw this miracle right in front of himself and he's a very honest person he also had talked about his encounter of Jesus when he went to heaven when he was very young and uh, he said I have seen many videos and stories of many evangelists but I have never seen anyone like Catherine Kuhlman with miracles like this so she has great spiritual gift and she really used the spiritual gifts for God's glory so these are positive examples of people who use the spiritual gift and enter God's perfect plan 
And God's nature and grace, God is full of spiritual gifts. He is full of wisdom and all kinds of spiritual gifts. He can give spiritual gifts to anyone who love Him. The main thing is to love Him. Because when we love Him and obey Him, then He will give us all kinds of spiritual gifts sufficient to carry out God's perfect plan. And so He is full of gifts and He's happy to give us the spiritual gifts and He is happy to help us to enter God's perfect plan. He will give us the resource, the opportunities, the wisdom to enter God's perfect plan. And why don't many people enter God's perfect plan? Because they think that they follow the world's plan, their own plan, then they are wise. They think that they just chase after the girls they want. Instead of following God's direction, they chase after their own girls. Then they lose the perfect plan of God. And many people, they, uh, they stumble because of romance, because they love someone who is not chosen by God or who is not a Christian. Even a Christian, a very weak Christian, but they don't seek God's will. So they lose this blessing of God. And then how we can uh, enter God's perfect plan? Then we uh, in Romans 12, 1 to 2, dedicate our body as a living sacrifice. And do not be conformed to the world, do not follow the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. So we dedicate our whole life to God and be transformed by God and follow God and love God and obey God and, and serve God in every possible way. Then God will be happy with us and He will bless us and He will use us. He will help us go to a high level. So any qualities of God that God wants us to have that uh, we can use this method to guide people to see you know, negative and positive examples who live out these qualities and then also God's nature and grace, He wants to give us this, this nature and why many people don't have it and then how we can have it. So I hope that you will write outlines. This is a very simple outline. You can write other outlines. Uh, this is just one way. But I hope you all include God's nature and grace. Because uh, we want to glorify God by telling people how wonderful God is. That's God's nature and grace. And how we can do it. That's very important to tell people how. Okay? Now let's talk about another message. Is how to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Negative examples of people who don't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That there are people who just serve God with their own wisdom, with their own power. That they work very hard, but they just don't have the result from God. They are using their own way. They're using human ways. And positive examples are people who, are, who, have, who spend time with God, who love God, who follow God, who obey God. And then God gives them the uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and they are filled with the gifts of, from God uh, and then God's nature and grace God is full of spiritual gifts He is willing to give us the anointing His, the anointing is the presence of God the strong presence of God to bless our life and our ministry God has this strong anointing He is happy to give us His strong anointing whenever He touches someone that person is can be totally changed. And why many people don't have uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Because they don't treasure God's gifts. They don't treasure God because they serve God with their own way. They don't think that God can help them. They think that they, have, they are more wise than God. Some people might think that way. I, I will use my method instead of using God's method. And also, many people don't believe the Bible that says that, yes, we can have supernatural gifts, like in uh, Romans, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talk about the spiritual gifts of healing, of miracles, of prophecy, of speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues. So, God can... You know, Paul told us about these spiritual gifts and he can give us. God is happy to give us these spiritual gifts. But many Christians, they don't believe that we, be, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit in these days 
and also they don't believe that they can receive this spiritual gift. So, so I hope that we all believe that, yes, we can have spiritual gifts from God and we hunger for God. So how can we have this anointing of God? We want to repent of our sin because sin stopped the work of God and we want to love God and believe in the Bible and really put God in the first place and have the heart to serve God, to glorify people, to glorify God and glorify uh uh, to glorify God and bless people and God is very happy with us when we do that and then God will give us that strong anointing the more time we spend with God the more we want to serve God the more he'll give us the anointing of the Holy Spirit okay so I hope you use you can use this outline and use other outlines and I have said that uh, please when you do the assignment please don't use my teachings that I already taught so use other passages that you can use this uh, outline method or other outline method to to write uh, messages to me and I'll comment on it okay right now we use this uh, passage Matthew 5 3 blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven now we notice that in the beatitude Jesus in every of this beatitude he always has a promise. Jesus motivates us to obey Him and follow Him with promises. So blessed are the poor in spirit, those who are humble, blessed are they. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then I'll promise them you'll have the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, mourn for the sin. Or they say, yes, I have sadness, I need God to comfort me. For they will be comforted. So that's the promise that they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So the, the gentle, the people who are gentle. And then Jesus promised that you will inherit the earth, that you'll have authority on earth to bless people, and you'll have the fruit of the earth, you'll have blessings from the earth. Six, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So this is the promise. When you hunger for God's righteousness, you'll be filled. God will give you His righteousness and God will also help you to have the righteousness of Christians. So that's a promise that God will give it to you when you hunger for God and all the good things of God. And then verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So this is the promise of God. You notice that in the Bible, there are all kinds of promise to motivate people to love God and serve God and, and obey Him. When we are merciful to people, we will obtain mercy. So this is the promise. You will obtain mercy when you have compassion on people. When you care about people, you want to bless people and help people. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So this is the promise. When you are pure in heart, you will see God more and more clearly. You can see the nature of God, you can see the love of God, you can experience His God, uh, the work of God, and you can be guided by God. You can hear the voice of God. So this, this is the promise from God, that they shall see God and experience God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So this is the promise. When they try to make peace with people, they will be called sons of God. Verse 10, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So here is a promise that they will inherit the kingdom of heaven when they are persecuted for righteousness' sake. When they are persecuted because they follow God's righteousness, because they live out God's righteous way, and then they are persecuted for that, then they will inherit the kingdom of heaven that God will give to them that is a promise blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake so when people persecute you and speak against you falsely blessed are you so this is the promise now blessed are you you'll be blessed when you are persecuted for my sake 12 rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So here is the promise that great is your reward in heaven. That when we are persecuted, 
for Jesus' sake, because the prophets have been persecuted too. And so we can rejoice because great is our reward in heaven. So all this beatitude, there is a promise of God. Okay, so now here I just uh, choose uh, chapter 5, 10 to 12 here. Uh, here, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, and then theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you, uh, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So we use those four points as an outline. Many Christians are afraid of persecution. So this is a negative example. People are afraid of persecution, and some Christians suffer bravely for God. These are positive examples that people, they suffer for God. They are persecuted for God's sake. And then too, God treasures those who suffer for Him. This is His nature and His grace. God treasures those who suffer for Him. When we suffer for Him, He, he treasures us, He appreciates us. Because they are willing to pay a high price for God, God will reward them. So this is the promise of God. This is the uh, blessings of God. And also, Jesus is a suffering God. He came and He died for us. He is a suffering God. And why many Christians are afraid of persecution? Because they think that they, they're afraid of pain, they're afraid of death, they're afraid of suffering. So they are afraid. They didn't realize that when they suffer for Christ, actually they'll experience God more. They'll experience the presence of God, the power of God. They'll experience the reward of God. And how we can have courage to suffer for Christ. The way is to, we have to build up a faith to believe that God is in control of everything. Every blessing is in God's hand. When we per are persecuted for God's sake, God is very happy with us. For sure, He will bless us. He will not leave us alone. He will not forsake us. He will not let us suffer without, without hope. He will give us hope. He will talk to us because Jesus has promised us that. When you are taken to synagogues and before magistrates, when you are persecuted, do not think of what you, how to answer, but the Holy Spirit will teach you how to answer. So God will be with us when we are suffering for Him. God will guide us. So when we understand that, that we, we won't be afraid. And also, you know, God is, He remembers our suffering and He'll reward us for ever and ever. When we have been persecuted for Christ's sake, for eternity, for millions and millions and millions of years, we'll be rewarded for our suffering for Christ. That is very worth it. So I'm not afraid of suffering for Christ. I've thought about, I want to be in the great persecution. I want to experience God's guiding me in the great persecution, that I can help other Christians and, and, and hear the guidance of God so I can serve God and glorify Him in the great persecution and how to receive uh, food and water during the persecution. So I, I have a heart for, for suffering for Christ. I'm not, not afraid because I, you know, we live only for a certain time. And when we, the suffering is very great, we can ask God to take us to heaven. We can glorify God in front of people and we say, Jesus is real because Jesus will be talking to us. We can tell them, Jesus is talking to me now. He tells me what to say. He is right here. So I hope you also repent and follow Jesus.